You should you should have got a dark horse. That's what you should have done. I would have gotten a dark horse. <laughs> uh, it's your man Jay, and we're gonna talk about some things in this video. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Let's go. Alright guys, welcome back to another video of Shaman J. Today, uh, answering a few questions that I've been getting uh, and then also uh, just kind of uh, chatting with you guys about my experience with the Mustang so far. Uh, but first off, mm, why didn't you get a dark horse? You should have got a dark horse. I would have gotten a dark horse. Well, I implore you to go ahead and get your dark horse. Personally, uh, I don't see the, the need for uh, to, to have the name of a different car uh on the same car and then also just have all these performance parts that i probably would never use um i'm get, i didn't get a dark horse because i won't use it for any of the things it's intended for and furthermore if i want the extra power i can just kind of do it with this car right here if i just really wanted to so it's really just about saving money uh, if you saw my other video on the uh, uh lt1 or one lt corvette c8 uh, i you know it's convincing that uh the one lt is is basically the car to get if you want the c8 unless you want to look different or you want to show everybody that you got this higher trim and just drive around town to the same car meets that everybody else is going to for the bragging rights and that's ultimately what it comes down to is the bragging rights i've only found very few people online that post content with the vehicle that they purchased uh those higher higher markup marked up cars with a few more performance parts actually using it. it's like 0.1 percent actually use those things at track and things like that online now a lot of you guys don't get online or there's a lot of people that are not online that are totally probably using the vehicles for what they are intended for uh, as their main use case scenario but me the gt is a phenomenal purchase uh, and for my purchase price that i got it for it's a great deal you know it's uh it's just a good car to get it's the car to get uh of all the cars that are offered from ford right now for the mustang models i think the base gt in a manual with the exhaust is the ultimate power play for that vehicle. I mean, you just can't beat what you're getting for that price point when it comes to wanting something that's new and eclectic on the road, offers an updated modern interior, uh, just all these other things that it's offering uh, for the price. So I didn't get a dark horse because I didn't want one right now. I don't, I don't need one, didn't want one, and I probably would never use that car to that to the to the best of my ability for track use and all those things i did those things when i was in my 20s and uh maybe late 30s i was going to the track and stuff like that i'm just not interested in that right now I'm, i moved on i think you probably should too uh but um to, to whoever keeps posing these questions to me about why didn't i get a dark horse i should have got a dark horse um i've learned a lot of people out there definitely want to spend other people's money uh, by saying what they would have done if they had the money. Uh, it is what it is. This is part of the game. You're going to get people on here to tell you you should have done something or I wouldn't have gotten that color. I would have gotten this. Uh, but always do things, uh, when you're, especially when you're spending your own money, you get what makes you happy. And for me, I'm always going to shoot for, when it comes to like these muscle cars, they are really high in price. Now, obviously for a daily driver, um, I, I would go ahead and spend a little bit more to get something more luxurious, like a higher trim Cadillac or the, my high country. I got a freaking high country. I didn't need a high country. Um, I could have got that same engine in a lower priced vehicle, but I wanted the high country. That is a daily driver for me. And I like all the functionality of it that I'm getting with the things that comes with the high country. But for something that I'm just going to beat on on the weekends uh, and maybe when it's nice outside, pull it out at night. It's, I, I don't need all those. I, I don't need to have the higher trim. Uh, I don't need the Recaro seats because uh, they're not going to be as comfortable as the regular seats. For sure they're not because um, I've been in the Recaro seats and I've checked everything out. And yeah, they're comfortable, but they're not going to be comfortable for long rides, which led to that conversation about the one uh, one LT that I had on the C8. Those seats were really comfortable, uh, but I'll answer, I'll answer that question next. My C8 transition to the Ford Mustang. This is um, not complicated, but there's a lot that goes into that 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 question. And when asked to me, like, why did you get rid of your C8? Uh, do you like the C8 better than the Corvette or than, than the Mustang? Or do you like the Mustang better? Um, yeah, I didn't get a dark horse because I didn't see the point in getting one. I don't, I don't need one. Uh, and as far as the C8 transitioning from the C8 to the to the Mustang GT, if I'm being honest, I wish I had got a Mustang. I hadn't got had a, gotten a Mustang years ago. The must in a manual, mind you. The the, the manual Mustang is more fun uh, than the C8 
for real, uh, by a long shot. Uh, the the Mustang manual, six speed that's in there, people are speaking uh, kind of crazy about the MT, M, uh, MT82 transmission. I don't have a problem with it. It shifts fine for me. Um, you know, some people say, oh, wait till long term, wait till long term, it'll fall apart. It won't fall apart. I'm not looking for things to fall apart on the car. If, if something has a history of something, I'm not looking to experience that history. <laughs> and furthermore, the car comes with a warranty on it already. And, uh, you know, I'll just let that be handled that way. And if I end up keeping this car uh, and, the, and the transmission goes out, I'll just have to get it repaired. It's just kind of how it is. Uh, but I do like the Mustang GT, uh, this 24 Mustang GT, better than my Corvette, I have to admit. The Corvette felt so much like a showpiece um uh i don't know it just felt like i had to baby that car uh, i had to do a whole bunch i had to prepare so i don't know it just felt different driving the um the c8 than, than the mustang and i said in another video i think i said in another video i probably won't get as much attention in this mustang than i did in the corvette and i guess i was wrong because tons of people on the road and I think it's a, just a lot of Mustang people. I just see so many people staring and waving. It's weird. I didn't get that much in the Corvette. I saw a lot of people. And when I was stopping the Corvette, yes, people would talk to me because they thought it was a Ferrari. Uh, and, you know, it's just it's a, it's a different mood with the Mustang. Uh, it's it's a, a different type of person. Like their, their personality and attitude is all different. Uh, Mustang people get excited to see you driving a Mustang. <laughs> Some people say it's about time you finally got a real muscle car. Like people here and people online, like man, you got a real muscle car now. You got a real car, and I'm like, wow, you know, that's a that's a bold statement. But you know, I guess you know if you feel like I, I wasn't driving real cars before for sports cars and muscle cars, I get you. It's fine. It's personal preference. But um, I gotta admit, I do like the uh, Mustang better than the C8. Uh, they're the same colors, uh, and. Um, the C8 is definitely a beautiful. I like the exterior of the C8, obviously a lot better. I like that it's a real, real a mid-engine car. But after a while, when when dealing with that mid-engine car, when I started to look into modifications and look into different things, uh, I actually did go to purchase a a full a full exhaust for the uh, for for the C8, and no nobody wanted to work on it. Nobody wanted to work on that on that car. They just like, nah, man, I don't feel like th that car is exhaust shops. They were like, nah, we don't really want to mess with that. Try so-and-so. And it's kept referring me off. Uh, that's not going to happen with the Mustang. I can pull off this exhaust right here and get it done myself in the garage if I want to. So, you know, modifications to wheels and things like that is cool. On, that's cool on, on the C8. Just the exhaust was something that uh, I thought at one point I wanted to change. And so I started doing research. And went out to go and buy one, and people were like, "Man, we don't really want to mess with that one." Is it, it what year is it? They started asking if it was a C8. They don't really want to mess with it. When I just said Corvette, Mustang, whole another ball game. Uh, you you can you can pretty much tear this Mustang apart um, in in the garage in less time than you'd have to do for the C8. And so yes, uh, not just modifications, but I, I like the overall driving experience with the Mustang better than the C8. Uh, a lot less um, movement inside the V8s. One a C8. Once I was in the C8, I was just in, and there was no reaching across very simply to do this or turn around and doing. It. Yeah, no, there was none of that. You were in the C8. You were in the C8, and that was just that. Simply put, <laughs> there was nothing else. So, yeah, I like the I like the the uh, Mustang GT. Uh, this Mustang GT uh, better than my C8. Uh, the interior I like on the on the Corvette better. I like the Corvette's interior better, uh, but I do have a lower. Well, I did have I had a lower trim C8, but the C8 costs roughly thirty some odd dollars, thirty some odd thousand dollars more than this, and that's what makes the uh, and it wasn't very much more powerful. It had more torque and everything, uh, but you know, and a little bit more horsepower. But you know, thirty thousand plus dollars more worth? No, I don't think so. So yeah, the Mustang is a uh, an even smarter purchase than than the C8 Corvette. Uh, now, when it comes to the Camaro, you can get the Camaro for more power overall, uh, more torque, not more horsepower, but you can get a manual 2024 uh, Camaro, uh, and it has active uh, uh, it has active exhaust. It's got rev matching, everything you know. So it's it's a good it's a good buy. 
uh, I just chose that I already had a Cor I had a Camaro already, and I was like, I really want to try something different. And this Mustang really intrigued me. It really intrigued me, and I just knew that it was the right thing to do. Uh, so I, that's why I placed the order, because I placed the order, again, if you haven't seen that video, I placed the order on November 11th. I've gone through the entire breakdown of my order as well. Uh, so I placed the order knowing that, you know, I didn't have to buy it if I just didn't want to. And I said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and just get this. I'm going to go ahead and get it. Uh, because after driving several of them, I drove like three or four of them. They let me just take them home. Well, the, the first one they drove, I drove, they didn't let me take it home. But the second two, they pretty much just let me take it home. And it's like, yo, take it, man. Cause they, they, they wanted me to buy something that was already built and kind of scrap my order. But I was like, nah, I'm, I'm sticking with my order. This is the right thing to do. Uh, and, um, yeah, that, that's what, that's what I wanted to do. So ultimately what I did was I, I placed the order, uh, and, um, yeah, I, I, I picked it up. It came in, in just, just under two months, <laughs> believe it or not, ordered November 1st. It came, it came in exactly, it came in two months, a little over two months. I mean, uh, I ordered on November 1st and it came on January 6th. And so that's impressive, man, to say the least. And, um, yeah, quick turnaround time. I think some people thought in my, in my video, when I talked about, it, I got it in two months that I was complaining. No, I was excited. I was surprised. It was a great experience. They had a little hang up with the shipping sitting in San Antonio for about a week or so, but I, I wasn't deterred by that. I was like, no, nah, I'm getting this thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, excited about it, man. And I'm, I'm happy that I went with this instead of the dark horse. The Dark Horse is a great showpiece, just like the C8s, uh, but I don't think I could ever do sixty-nine or $68,000 or whatever the price was for a, a, a Mustang. You know, I'm new to Mustangs. Uh, I feel like the what I paid, maybe I may have gotten mine for less than invoice, but the GTs from the previous year, you can get those things pre-owned with some pretty decent miles on them for like $28,000. And if you go back even further, you can get them for even less. So... Um, I could have gotten a, a Shelby, you know, instead of getting this 24, I could have got a pre-owned Shelby. Uh, but I wanted to have my first Mustang experience, a good one. And I'm glad that I didn't get the Dark Horse. I, now, don't get me wrong. I did look into getting the Dark Horse, but you can't get the Dark Horse in that color. They're limiting the Dark Horse's production to certain, like five or six colors. And that's not one of them. And I was like, man, this is messed up. But I went with it, so... I'm glad I got the GT. So those of you that were worrying about like, why didn't you get the, why didn't you get the dark horse? You should have got the dark horse. No, I think you should get the dark horse. If you want the dark horse, I had the ability to get the dark horse, but what's the point? And you know, it's so funny. You know, what drove me to drive to make this video is because a dark horse uh, was riding in front of me uh, today on this very day that I'm recording this video. Uh, January 15th is recording this video and a dark horse is riding in front of me and turned at the light. And I said to myself, I didn't miss anything. Uh, I mean, I have a Mustang. It looks exactly like that. It sounds like that. Um, it, that car's just a little faster and has way more performance parts and cooling and stuff like that. But I'm good. I'm good. So yeah, I didn't get a dark horse because I didn't see the need to buy one. It didn't. It didn't fit me. There are people out there that have made videos saying why the why the dark horse is better than the GT. Those are just to get people to click on the video and stir people up and get a conversation going uh, because that's just that person's opinion. Some of you guys are gonna disagree with me and say, no, you got it wrong, Jay. You should have got the dark horse. You should have spent the extra 20,000 plus dollars and got the dark horse. And I'm gonna say, well, sorry you feel that way. I'm happy to see your dark horse if you decide to pick one up. I don't need one car sitting in the garage, not going to drive it much during these colder days. So uh, it won't come out. It's only going to come out when it's sunny out and, and same thing with my CA. It's only going to come out on warm, sunny days. That's when it's going to come out and I'm going to enjoy it uh, at night. Uh, I do, I'm working on another day drive video, but like I just said, it's 20 degrees outside. I'm not taking that car out. I know it has Continentals on it, but I'm not taking that car out. It's, it's not going to see cold days and hopefully it doesn't see any rainy days. Uh, and it's just going to sit in the garage until I decide to drive it. Um, I'm excited to, to, that I finally got my first Mustang and I think I got the right must right first Mustang based on who I am. I like tech. And in this car, there's a lot of tech. Some people do not like the dash on these cars, but that's a plus because all the cars are getting the same dash. And I thought that was pretty cool. 
Uh, some people are getting the premium just to have them joined together. I think that's a silly reason to buy it, <laughs> you know, because aftermarket parts are going to come out and aftermarket parts are going to have something that goes in that slot for like a cup holder or some kind of uh, storage. It's going to happen, folks. It's just the way it is. That's the way the market is. So um, I appreciate you guys uh, stopping by and watching and, and checking out what I'm doing here on the channel with this car. Uh, but stay tuned for more. I've given you an update on the high country already. I still have to give you that, that uh, 10,000 mile follow up on the GMC. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, that's why I didn't get a dark horse. I think you probably would know the answer to this if you've been following me long enough when you saw my other cars, my C8 and, and, and everything, and then my LT1 Camaro. I'm willing to just change out the interior and do a few things, modify suspension or wheels if I have to, uh, just to make it my own. But I can't see spending $69,000 on a Mustang, not just yet. Uh, not to say that's a bad thing. It's just not, I'm a new Ford owner, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with my purchase, and I'm I'm really glad I got the color combination exhaust and the manual that I got. Totally worth it. Um, and I'll follow up again uh, with more worth type of th things and opinions from me in another video. So, Jermaine J, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, yeah, I did the right thing by getting a GT because it was right for me. If you own a dark horse, comment down below. I'll go to your page and check it out, and I'll live vicariously through you this time. Take care.